I think that's it. I think that that should have worked. Well, hello, <laughs> welcome back to Show and Tell. I'm Billy, I'm your host. And today I have with me 13 other knitters who have all been busily knitting away on their 1927 Elsa Scaparelli Bonat sweaters. If you saw our first uh, session, which was two weeks ago, we were just discussing the types of yarns that we were going to use and people had begun swatching. I had not yet received my yarn, but I have it now. So I know that some of the people on the call have made more progress than I have. And I'd like to go around, I'll call on them individually and ask them to please share just initially where they're at and then issues and other things will come back around. But first, just like a quick, you know, 10 second snapshot of how much progress you've made and we wanna see your yarns and so forth. So Haley, I'm gonna ask you to kick it off. Hello. Hi. Okay, so um, I'm not knitting to the same gauge as the pattern and I'm a different size. So I'm doing my own thing slightly. And I'm starting with the back um, so I can get the length that I want with the slightly more straightforward um, color work that we have. Um, and I've just done a few inches. Um, I'm using the yarn stated in the pattern. I actually love the back more than the front. <laughs> I love the way it looks. <laughs> um, it's probably not perfect, but I'd love to see the color through. It doesn't show as much because my gauge is a bit tighter um, and it's a bit dark, but you can sort of see the white peeping through. Um, Terrific. You can see it. At least yeah. I'm able to see it on my screen. Yeah, that's Good. just great. Amazing. Okay, we're going to talk more. Let's go to Eleanor. Yeah, um, again, I'm a different size and I'm using a different yarn. Um, turns out my yarn is not fingering weight as I thought, it's a lace weight. Oh, I don't mind. F fingering weight for, for me, garments for me, fingering weight is about as heavy as I go. Um, so I'm used to things taking a long time. Um, but I've started knitting. I'm trying to get it. We so, call that slow fashion. Yes. Yes. I'm, I'm started on the front. Um, can you oh, see that? And yes. I've just started the bottom of the bow. Um, and I'm using sort of a combination of, of the Armenian method and Intarsha. Um, because I don't have enough of the grey to carry that along the back all the time. So I'm using, and I've got loads and loads of the sort of the goldy colour. So I'm using two lots of the goldy colour. And then when, a, when it comes to the grey, I'm just sort of holding both behind the grey. Can um, we see the back? Can you see that? Oh, interesting. Okay. Yeah. Um, but it's it's giving um, a nice but very subtle texture on 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 the goldy part. Um, I've tried photographing it to show it to other people, but my photography skills don't. But it's not completely flat stocking net. There's a little bit of texture, but it's very very subtle, and I like it. Perfect. Okay, let's move on to Julie. She just went off camera, so maybe. Um, no, I'm here. Oh, good. I'm, I'm I'm suffering from I can't see anybody except uh, pictures of the other two people in the UK. So I'm just fiddling around here. I don't know what's happened, but I've started. I've got my yarn um, as per the pattern, and uh, I've done a couple of swatches. And I've had to go down to a three needle to get the, um, what you should have, five, is it five and a half stitches to an inch? And that's all I've done so far on the actual garment. Okay. That's good. So that's where I am. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you. Anne. Yes, hello. Uh, I'm I'm even farther behind because I'm I'm just working on my technique. 
<laughs> the uh, figuring how to knit the, the Armenian uh, comfortably, which is, uh... can you hear me? Yes, yes. Okay, okay. By any chance, did you see the video that I put out on? Yeah, yeah, but I'm, I'm, I'm to trying to work out, but especially the pearl side. I mean, the, the, the right side is, the knit side is, is easy, but the, the pearl side, but I'm, I'm getting there and I'm going to swatch. I got my yarn, I got the uh, Jameson. Um, and I've started to read uh, Shocking Life, which I'm enjoying really, really, really. It's it's really nice book, yeah. Wow, she had to be an amazing character. Yeah. And there's there's about three pages uh, about the knitwear, how how it how how it uh, how she did it, how how she came across the the sweater that she didn't like, but she liked liked the the way it was knitted. And, right. Uh, yeah. yeah. I've read excerpts of it, and in fact, I did another video on. Elsa Scaparelli, a little introduction leading into this knit along. So mm -hmm. viewers can go and watch that as well. And there are some small quotes from her book and specifically about this sweater. Okay, yeah. let's let's move on to the next person because we've got a bunch of people. Sophie, yeah. take it away. Um, I've not actually done a huge amount more than last time. Um, but I've got the beginnings of the of the bottom of the bow. Well, it's a lot. It, and it's <laughs> exciting to have reached that point. Yeah. And the back does look very nice. <laughs> I would have expected nothing less. <laughs> Lisa says, so pretty. <laughs> it is. Yeah. It is. And this is the hat I'm trying to match. Perfect. It's, <laughs> it's going to be brilliant. Oh, hope so. <laughs> I, without a doubt. Okay, thank you. Joan, nice to meet you. It is nice to be seen. I am just going to put my settings. Uh, show self. There, now I can see what I need. Um, hi, I started with the, uh, the JNS two-ply jumper weight, because when I shop, I usually buy in kilo, in kilo weights. I had gotten midway up uh, this is how far I'd gotten. And then I realized I'm not all that fond of the way the bow looks. It, something to my brain was just off. So I went to the VN, VNA and did a screenshot of and stitch fiddled it so I could get a different pattern of the bow. And uh, now this is this is as far as I've I've gotten up again. It's purple and oh an acid green. But um, I'm, I'm liking the way it's turning out now. I think it looks the way it's supposed to look. I think it's rather amazing. And I salute those of you who are brave enough to do the Armenian technique. Well, Thank I, you. Was, I was actually really not pleased with it. I, I just hated it until I was at my knitting group and we're 30, 30 feet across from each other. What are you knitting? Oh, that's just absolutely beautiful. Well, I'm just going to rely on my friends to tell me it's looking okay, because I will get there eventually. Well, I think that's the fun of doing this, that we are all going to compare notes. So we understand what you're going through, or at <laughs> least some of us, and can be supportive. Okay, I got a bunch more people to get through. So let's keep moving. How about Esther? If you start to speak, you'll, you'll be fine. Um, but I actually only just started knitting today. Uh, I have several other projects that I needed done, so I haven't gone, gotten too far. 
And I decided that I wanted this to be a part of a uh, sort of a stash of things object. I guess I have way too much yarn at home. Um, so for now, I haven't gotten too far. Um, and I've not begun the Aminian knitting yet because I will not have enough of the contrasting color. So I will start um, knitting the Aminian part just below where the bow stops. Um, so I'm still early beginning. I have um, changed up the pattern a little bit because I wanted to knit it in the round instead. And I've also done a folded bottom so it won't roll. And yeah, that's about it. Thank you. Great. Barbara. All right, very boring. <laughs> I'm up to the point where I will be getting to the bow. And that's what mine will look like. I'm gonna do a dolman. The um, black is very boring. The bow will be this color. Shot, <laughs> of course. And it goes over the arm. I'm gonna have it go over the arm. And uh, yet to be determined if that side's gonna be done. I haven't decided yet. I don't want it to go too much on the back, just over the arm on the one side is what I'm gonna do. It looks so stunning. Mine. Is that also a Scaparelli pattern? It is not, but it is a bow and it is her color. <laughs> no, I'm asking because she so. did many different types of bows. I haven't seen all of them. I've only seen a few and I don't know the whole array of all of the different bows. So oh. I didn't know if that one was or not, but no, it's very no, I just I just graphed it. Perfect. I, I think I'll use it. We'll see. <laughs> I wish I would have gone with a different fabric uh, yarn. This will work. It's very sturdy. I don't love it, but it's okay for this. He'll be fine. I wish I would have gone with um, maybe a Rowan alpaca soft or something would have been nicer but it's a prototype so it's okay I, i'm happy i'm happy and are you doing i missed this are you doing the armenian technique or you're doing intarsia intarsia okay so when so i get it it's so easy when i get so no floats perfect got it yeah i'm no floats. i'm also doing intarsia so welcome to that club <laughs> <laughs> all righty you're much go. more difficult, girls. This is easy. This is just yes, it, go it like is. crazy. <laughs> okay, All thank right. you. Louise, please unmute yourself and tell us about where you're at. Well, I've only just joined. So um I joined Have you last. Watched? No, I haven't. I'm knitting the last three rows on something I've been knitting since May and I'm starting, I've chosen what type of wool I'm using, which is a New Zealand um, woolen spun. And I haven't decided on the color because I'm having to use stuff that I had put aside for another jersey. And there's only a certain amount of some colors left over. And I'm going to have to make quite a few adjustments just to increase the size for it. So a bit of thinking to do there, but um, I live in an Art Deco city. So um, we always fight with the Art Deco of the world with California, um, with LA. So I'm really looking forward to getting this done. And I'm planning on the Armenian technique because I really want to um, try that. Good. So that's Great. where I'm at because I only joined on Sunday, I think, last week. Don't don't worry. Everybody's yeah. <laughs> at a different place. I only got my yarn in the last week, so I was a little late to the party. I wanted to hear what everybody else was doing and see their colors before I settled firmly on mine. So it's no problem. No need to apologize. Okay. I am considering navy, though. Okay. White. All right, now the people who aren't on screen, I'm not sure if you want to present, but Thea, it looks like you're off mute, so. Am I off mute? Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Oh, whoops. I Are you interested in showing us your work? Well, I can talk about it. I'm sitting okay. here on the computer. Um, I am a machine knitter, actually. 
not a hand knitter. So I will create this on my pass up machine, electronic uh, pass up. And what I have been doing is uh, I imported the pattern into GIMP and uh, rescaled the gauge to what the document says was the original gauge of nine stitches per inch. And when I swatch, I will, sw I will swatch for a setting that will give me the nine stitches to the inch. So the effect will be that the bow will look a little smoother because instead of five and a quarter stitches to the inch, it'll be nine stitches to the inch. Um, that's as far as I got. And the other thing that I will need to do is explore the UX function on the pass up. This is a little technical, I suppose, and find out, you know, how I can approximate the Armenian look at the back and the front of the swatch using uh, various slip and tuck uh, techniques. So that's as far as I got. Um, as far as yarn selection, I have um, a lot of yarn from uh, Barocco Ultra Wool Fine, which is a super wash wool. And I'll probably choose something from there. Um, and I have a late arriving undyed superwash merino, which I will probably use for the bow, which will be very pretty, I think, a very, or, or, I'll, or I'll dye it some, some nice color. <laughs> okay. Something reddish or pinkish. That's it. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, Michelle, I didn't forget about you. Go ahead. Hi. Right, well, I started out trying to perfect this Armenian technique. But I found it was really slowing me down. And I took note of what Lisa said last time we met when she said, don't be so adamant that you're going to do the Armenian technique because, you know, maybe that technique, it, well, basically I found by switching to fair isle, so literally carrying floats every two stitches, gave me exactly the same outcome as the Armenian. So a good tip to anyone who's finding it really slow going on this Armenian, you can do it quicker by just doing that, carrying your floats as you would Fair Isle. So by me switching, I was able to get along a lot quicker and I've actually today finished the front. <laughs> so I've literally finished the front today. Oh my goodness. Literally like a couple of hours ago. So I've got I haven't blocked it yet. So I'm going to block it. But just to let you know, I did actually go wrong on the bow. And I thought, oh God, it, it meant I might lose a day or two. But my husband said, well, why don't you just kind of change the bow a bit? So I did. And to be honest, by changing this side just slightly. You know, does it really matter? You know, no one's no one's going to look at me outside and think she hasn't done that bow right. <laughs> you know, so just go with it. If you make a slight mistake, it just takes so long to unwind. Like you know, carried on floats for even like five or six rows. So yeah, and and the thing is, mine is really soft because I've gone for a cash merino with um, some Angora. So the cream I'm using is Angora, which is really fluffy. So it kind of comes through on, the, on the black. Excuse me one second, Michelle. I wanted to try and show an image um, if I can figure out how to do that. Just a second. Do you see two bow sweaters on your screen? Yes. Yes. Okay. So the one on the left, these are both originals from 1927. The one on the left is the one that lives at the Victoria and Albert Museum in London. The one on the right is the one that lives in the Philadelphia Museum of Art in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania in the United States. You can see that they are different. Yeah. Probably two yeah. different people knit these. Now, I, for one, prefer one over the other, 
So I'm going to kind of steer myself more towards that one. But that's why when Barbara showed hers, I thought like, hey, you know, I know that there are other styles. Um, so I think it's perfectly okay. Like just for example, if you look up here, there's a lot more thickness of white. There's maybe like three or four stitches there where here maybe there's only one stitch. Um, this black line comes straight down. This one has a little jog in it. This has a, a very clear square step. This one is a little longer. So there are variations. This whole knot part is, or bow part is um, narrower. So I think it's perfectly okay to do what is working for you. Now, let me yeah. see if I can get rid so, of this. So if I just <laughs> show you the everything up. reverse. So that's the reverse. So it's, you know, it's quite interesting. Oh, it looks really like on the, and, and And actually the bow part, I'm, I'm actually carrying the flow every stitch. I just felt that it gave it more definition. So that's what I did. I'm just carrying it every stitch. So the secret will be when I come to block, so fingers crossed when I block it, I can stretch it a bit because it is currently measuring 16 inches across and I need another couple of inches. No so problem because you're going to, yeah, you're going to get that in your blocking. Okay, that's really yeah. great. So I'll, I'll, let, I'll let you know next time how I get on with that. So I've, I've actually, I've started the back now, so I've only just literally started that. So fingers crossed. <laughs> Thank you. I know that you've said that you're a slow knitter. I, I'm surprised you're like ahead of the pack, but okay. Let's go with Lisa. I am just swatching. I just started swatching today, um, but I'm using, that's the back. Um, I wouldn't use these colors. I would use the pink against with a black body, but um, this is DK Cashmere on nines, uh, US nines. So, um, I, which I ha kept having to go up needle sizes to so that you could see some of the um, floats. But I think um, I think I'm gonna. <laughs> the biggest challenge will be gauging it up and to the size that I need. So I don't think it's any more difficult than any other sweater. I'm I'm also enlarging mine a little bit. Um, just by adding in some extra stitches here and there. And because I know my gauge, I know exactly how many stitches I need. And, and so far, so good. But um, I'm saving mine for the last. Okay, thank you. Giovanna, first time. Are you interested in showing us something? Hello, I'm so happy to be here. Um, I'm actually decided to knit this sweater uh, and had no idea of this amazing call. So I'm a little bit late, but I bought my yarn and it has arrived. And here is some beautiful merino wool by this um, Brazilian, because I am Brazilian, um, by this Brazilian yarn shop. and. I will try to have something to show you all uh, in the next meeting. But for now, I'm reading um, oh. Elsa's autobiography. And look what she's wearing in the illustration, our sweater. And so I've bought white and black yarn. That's it. I didn't even start to, you know, knit my swatch yet. But I'm so happy to be here. That's okay. Thank you. I only got my yarn, I keep saying this, about five days ago. So you're not too far behind. And depending on the method that you use, it can go pretty quickly. Look at Michelle. <laughs> In two weeks, yes. she did the whole front. Okay. Who have I not had a little chat with? Um, Mary, are you interested in speaking to us? Come off speaker. Uh, mute if you want to tell us about your sweater. Um, I have not started yet. 
So I have nothing to show, which is good because I'm not on the video right now. Um, but I hope to be doing this um, in the next couple of weeks, getting the, I have some of the yarn. I think I'm using a black um, a Jameson's, but I'm not sure if that's going to be too scratchy. So that's kind of my dilemma. I have a lot of that and I could make the sweater out of that with probably white and maybe a peachy color instead, but I'm not sure yet. Okay. Because I don't know if anybody has any advice on that. I think it might be a little too scratchy to use the Jameson's. Any thoughts on that? That's what other people are using, the spin drift. I'm not, but many people are, and everybody seems okay with it. Have you washed it? Because sometimes if you um, mm -hmm. swatch and then wash your swatch. Well, that's true. It gets a lot softer. It that's might true. get softer. With the, with the lopey all the time, and it works better. Um, well, I will swatch. I, I have to swatch, and then when I do that, I can wash it and see what I think right. of it. Yeah. So, okay. We'll see you in two weeks and Thank hear you. about if it's still scratching. So supposedly if you wash it in, in hair conditioner, it's supposed to get softer. I've not yeah, tried it myself, but I've, I've heard, heard that. that. I haven't tried. I haven't tried that. The washing usually works. It's just that this is a tighter sweater and I'm not going to be wearing anything underneath it for sure. So I'm a little more concerned about it than I would be. I, I make a lot of lopey sweaters just for ski sweaters and stuff and I don't worry ever because I have a turtleneck under it usually so <laughs> I'm just thinking about that okay thank you I think Helen you might be the last one well I'm I'm still uh, suffering from tennis elbow and so I haven't started at all and I probably won't be starting even in two weeks time but um, I am planning on starting once I get going and I will be doing the uh, attempting the Armenian technique. Okay, we'll be cheering you on and hopefully Thank you. you're feeling better. Thank you. Have I missed anyone? If so, please raise your hand because I don't think I have. Perfect. Okay, so I guess I should do my big reveal. Uh, let me get myself on screen here. <laughs> I hope you're all seeing me because I'm not seeing me. But the reason I'm all wrapped up is I put mine on because I'm doing this in a completely different way than a normal person would. <laughs> but it's, it's my normal. I think I just lost part of my needle, but um, I was saying before we started recording that this area is the most challenging for me because my shoulders are narrow. I'm not super busty, but relative to my bust, my shoulders are, are narrow. So I, even with this, you can see that it's probably going to be beyond my shoulder. So clearly I'm doing shocking pink and black. I'm only doing intarsia, I'm not doing the Armenian technique. The yarn that I'm using, let me grab it to show you, is Rowan felted tweed. So it has already those little flecks in it and the black does as well. So I'm hoping to have the same kind of look as the Armenian method, which I really like without you know, sort of like cheating, don't tell anyone without doing all of that, you know, background carrying of floats. Uh, some of you will know that not too long ago, I finished a fair isle vest with 46 stitches to four inches. I had floating up to here. So this is kind of the easy way out for me. Um, I've done part of the back and I also started one sleeve. Now I thought this would be interesting for you. The hot pink stripe, that's just top stitching. I put that on there so you could see that's the center of the sleeve. It's not centered with my arm. And if you've read the pattern or listened to Lisa, the person who wrote the pattern, Lisa Stocky Brand, she explained that the front and the back are different sizes. So I was really 
perplexed by that. And what I did was like, I wanted to see how this was going to go together. So what I did was I put her pattern on my computer screen and I made it small enough that I could just trace, like I put this on my screen and I traced around it. So that's the back. This is the front. You might not be able to see that they're smaller, but if I hold them up, you might be able to see. In order for me to get these shoulders aligned, the front has to press forward because that would be my extra fabric. And it's the same thing at the shoulders. I could see that there was a little more in the shoulder that would be folded over. And then when I cut out the sleeve, I thought, no, and, and I folded it in half. I thought, no way is that sleeve filling up my armhole. So I wrote to Lisa and I was like, is this really going to work? It doesn't look like it. And she said, it will. So that's why I did a little bit of the front, a little bit of the back. I'm not quite to the armhole on the front, but I went all the way down the eight inches to the back of the armhole. And I did the sweater, uh, the sleeve rather, also down to that point where it would join under the arm. And I wanted to make sure that I had enough stitches to go around my arm because my arm is a little bit heavier, certainly than a 1920s woman. And it looks like everything is coming together well. So that's why I put it on and I covered myself up because I didn't want to start off showing you this. Uh, sleeve offset to balance offset front and back, Helen says. It's a little bit peculiar. I don't know if you're able to see, but that's my shoulder seam, which is exactly what Lisa described and showed us in her sweater, but hers was all black. This, I have scrap yarn where I made the stitches. So you can see that's not the top of my shoulder. So I hope that's helpful to some of you. Um, also, I don't know if you're able to see, I don't have those little jig jags because I'm using a technique called shaped intarsia. My bow also will not have all those little jogs in it. I wanted my bow to be smooth. So I made a little video, if you wanna watch that called shaped intarsia, you'll be able to see a way in which you can do that. So if you haven't started with the bow part of your sweater, and a lot of you haven't even begun at all, that's worth taking a look at in my humble opinion. Okay, does anybody have any issues that they wanna sort of uh, workshop here with the other people? If you do, just raise your hand so you'll pop to the top of my screen. Nobody, everybody is just humming along. Ah, Giovanna, go ahead. So how did you make this? amazing color right because it's almost like folded the pink in your neck right it's so pretty and you know rounded and you're knitting top down like you just followed the diagram that was like easier though easy that way well i followed the diagram except i wanted my v to be a little bit deeper I am not getting the same row gauge. I'm getting the same stitch gauge as the pattern calls for, but I'm getting more like eight rows to the inch instead of six rows to the inch. So I figured, and it was hard to know until I had it knit up. I would have liked the V to be even deeper, but I think this is gonna be okay because you will be able to see part of the bow. So often I'm on camera and you only see from here up. So I think if I made my V down to here, which I would have preferred, the bow would be down here. You wouldn't even see it right now. So I think this is probably a pretty good compromise. You'll see the top of my bow. Um, but other than just adding more rows in, I did not really do anything. Except, no, that's not actually correct. I did change, 
I, I did change the shaping. I kept the exact number of stitches because Lisa warned us about that, mm -hmm. but I changed how many stitches were pink. I thought that in the pattern, this was going to be too wide. And because I have a narrow shoulder and I wanted to have some black and some pink, if I had done the stitch count to fit my shoulder using her pink, I would have had almost no black. Okay. And I, because I'm short, I wanted a little bit of an elongated neckline. So I made my pink fewer stitches than she has, which might be why it looks a little different to you. But you can play with this. You know, maybe, you can do whatever maybe, you want. Maybe I will make my color the same way because I, it's so pretty and rounded. Congratulations. Thank you. I think the others, easier. Michelle, can you sh hold yours up again? Your collar's rounded, isn't it? So that's a different version. Hers is also rounded. It's just a different shape. But I made sure in the back to do the same so that, you know, I had the same number of blacks so that it, the pink and the black would match up because otherwise it would be really ugly. So that's gonna be a smooth transition to that little like sailor collar in the back. You should see me, I had to like walk around with this bag tethered to me because I have different balls for the different pieces going. Okay, any other questions that need addressing? Uh, I have one. Okay. Not, not really a question, but more a, an observation. If I'm not paying really a whole lot of attention, I'm finding that I'm dropping stitches. And I, because I'm using the, the Jameson and Smith, the very sticky wool, the stitch just sits there and waits for me to realize that it's, that it's missing. But but I am finding that I am every eight to 10 rows, I've dropped a stitch. Hmm. And then I just have to go back and, and crochet it back up. But it's uh, very unsettling to keep dropping stitches because I like to think that I'm a lot better than that. But <laughs> is that something that happens to you in other projects or it's unique no. to this project? It, it's just dealing with with all the all the floats and oh, the floats mm. it's yeah it's it's very surprising well the good news is it might not show just as long as you catch it so it doesn't run but i have a feeling even if it ran down like a stocking so you have more floats peeking through it would probably look okay yeah but that's the, well that's sorry the, about that <laughs> what can i say get better light well, yeah, and pay uh, more attention. I, I but it, what's great is that you're able to see them because your yarn is sticky. That's key. That's great. Okay, Barbara has her hand up. Go ahead. Okay, you had me go Google, and here is a Scoparelli on ah. Dolman. They sequined it, but it's the same idea. Isn't that fantastic? Sequins. Ooh. Oh, there must be 4,000 million gazillion sequins in this, Bo. It must be amazing. They did it on Angora. So those of you who are using Angora, that was apparently used by them also. So that's interesting. <laughs> I bet the sequin area was not Angora. That would be a nightmare. I have knit with sequins. Has anybody else ever knit with sequins? Yeah. On the yarn, not like sewn on afterwards, right. but right. It's horrible. Where you slide it down. <laughs> I, I did a video early on when I started this podcast because I had this dress. I have this dress from my aunt Matilda who passed away in the 1960s. She did an entire dress. The whole bodice was copper colored sequins checkerboard with a copper color yarn go back and find that episode it's smashing oh how wonderful i mean i i have i have a sequin piece i've done i will get i'll bring over and show oh, that you. would be that'd be great interesting it's awful 
it's awful. I mean, the whole thing is a nightmare. <laughs> In the 1980s, when I started knitting again after a very long hiatus, I asked the people in the yarn shop if they could show me how to do that. And at that time I made myself a whole camisole. There's not a sequin in every stitch. It's every other stitch. And it's also sort of every other row. So it makes kind of a fish scale. They're overlapping just enough. Now let's see how Barbara's looks. Oh my. Totally out of style now, but um, back when they had the real deep cut in pieces, it's floral. I couldn't throw it out because it was so much work. I can't wear it at this, that, it's out of style, but I, I did the back too. Do you still have the pattern that you used? Um, no, I drafted it. So it was a one-off for, I, and I used it for a um, for a, an occasion. And that's then, like amazing. But it wow. isn't knit. It isn't knit. Knitting with the sequins was much worse than this. Oh well, what is that? I thought it was knit. No, it's not knit. It's a uh, silk. And then you use silk threads in order to put it on. Oh, so you sew them on. This one was sewed on. Okay, the that's not at all. A, no, that's not at all what is, I'm talking about. Right, I have one of those as well, and that was that was much worse than this for trouble. Well, if you on. watch, I did a little tutorial, but it's embedded in the oh. video where I show the dress. So you have to oh. sort of get to the place in that video. I did like a Great. five tutorial. You have to load the sequins onto right. your yarn in a particular yeah. way so that when you knit and push them through the stitch, that it's concave yeah. facing you as opposed to right. convex, you know, with the scooped out part. You don't want the scooped out part facing right. in. You want it facing out so it can <laughs> affect all the light but you string it onto the yarn in a particular yes. way and then you're knitting with that yarn and oh, you slide wow. the sequin in as you get to the stitch right. but it's not in every stitch otherwise they're too, they too tight and it would be mm -hmm. too heavy and it wouldn't be so flexible so was hers on cobweb yarn because that's what i used no it, like i believe lace. it's probably on a fingering weight um, Whoa! But on a you know on a fine needle, I I right. think I might have counted. Well, it might have been thinner. I think I might have counted, and I mentioned it in the video. I think there might have been eleven stitches to the inch, something like that. Oh, so, look. but it doesn't. It didn't look that fine. It didn't look cobweb. Wow. But anyway, there are many yarns really? that will fit through the hole of a standard sequin. Yeah. So, ooh, maybe so that. Cool. <laughs> Maybe that's another knit along to do. That could be really interesting, but not yet because I have something else planned for after this one. Okay, um, Lisa, take it away. Um, I'm just wondering, and maybe some people said this, is anyone doing the Armenian or Fair Isle front, but then just doing a straight back or sleeve? Um, you know, not not floating anything on the back or the other parts. I don't hear any takers. If you do that, don't forget that you're going to have a different gauge. So you have to adjust your number of stitches. OK, I, I knew that you knew that, but there could be people out there who are thinking, hmm, good idea. And then they forget to like completely re- do the number of stitches. Anybody else have anything else they want to tell us? Uh, hello. Yeah, yes, I'm, just, I'm just I'm just enjoying it all. Oh, oh, great, Julie. And I've got I can see you all now because I've gone out and come back in and type the actual numbers in rather than joining on the button thing so i can see you all now <laughs> so okay. it's yeah <laughs> and did you want to add something 
yes, uh, about uh, uh, doing only the front and not the back, then you your uh, background yarn, yarn will be on the wrong side if you don't take it back. If you do just the Armenian technique on the on the on the front, and then you pearl back, uh, your uh, background yarn will be on the on the left side when you start not knit, knitting on the right side. I don't think it's possible. Anything is possible. No, what, what Lisa said. Yeah, uh, yeah, but 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 you have but you have to break your yarn. Oh, you'd have to cut your yarn. Yes, right. yes, yes. It's possible, but yeah. Well, unless you had a ball on each end and you were um, like staggering, you know, ball oh. A of white and you knit over. And now when you knit back, ball B of white is there. I mean, I don't think, I don't think so. But you could, have, you could have two. If white is your contrast color, you could have a ball of white on each end. So when you knit across with this one, and you leave it here, I think you could have the other ball waiting for you when you return. Yeah. I'm sure I, there's I, a way to figure that out so that it's, a, or absolutely cut the yarn and then bring it back and then you'll have 1 million ends to weave in. Yeah, yeah. No thanks. I think, I think there's a technical problem. <laughs> but anything I, can be surmounted in my opinion. Uh, but that wasn't actually what I meant. I meant, you know, you do the bow front because right we're knitting pieces. You do the front, you do the back, you do the sleeves. Um, I meant doing the intarsia front and then just doing a, a regular back with one strand of yarn, no contrast color, no tweedy effect. Um, right, I, 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 un been, I understood. Yeah. I understood that, but she raises an interesting point. If you didn't want to pearl back carrying floats on the pearl side if maybe you are only comfortable because you've been knitting fair out in the round and only doing knit all the time and steaking so you know there could be people who didn't want to pearl back floating i thought that she was raising that point like if you wanted to do your floats every other row yeah. just only on the knit side could you but then she's saying correctly, I think, that your yarn will not be waiting for you when you get back to it. Yeah, I've, I've, I've thought about uh, knitting it in the round and sticking. <laughs> I'm pretty sure when I get past the underarm that I might go to knitting in the round. Yeah, so, okay, we'll see. As long as I have this part and I know it's fitting me, then I can go, yeah. Maybe. I you know, I'm not I'm not sure. This is a little bit funky because of the different number of stitches. Again, it can be done. I'm sure there are reasons for doing it. There's probably pros and cons, you know, reasons to do it and reasons to not do it. I'm not sure. A lot of people don't like carrying a whole sweater on their lap to be knitting in the round, especially, you know, by the time you get down to the bottom, you have the whole thing. So I know some people like to knit in pieces for that reason. I'll see. I'm sort of these days in the camp of, I want to be able to try it on as I go to see how it's fitting, especially when I get down to my biggest problem spot, which is my hips. I really want to see, and just, you know, tacking it, um, basting it down the side, it's not quite the same. So I will decide. I can always decide, okay, I know I'm in control. I can connect the two sides and continue on. I'll see. Michelle, you want to add something? Yeah, Billy, I was just thinking, as you're using a different, are you using a different white yarn? What white is your yarn? It's DK. And I didn't say, I, I said it's Rowan Felted Tweed. It's Merino, Alpaca, and Viscose. I've never used it before. I've heard people rave about Rowan Felt yeah. and Tweed, and I thought, like, how good could it be? Yeah, it's um, lovely. It is lovely yarn. I just wondered, how, how did you know how much to order? Because I never you're using know how, a different I, way. I never know how much to order, but 
I took a chance. I ordered. So how much did um, you how much did you order in the end? I ordered five balls of black and three balls of pink, and I'm pretty sure I'm going to have yarn left over. But you know, there's always a beret or well, yeah, <laughs> something else to you know use it for. Yeah. So if I do have leftover, it won't be the end of the world. Yeah. See, um, I, my um cone that I ordered for my May was. Oh, I think you froze 250 up. 250 grams. But from looking, and it's only sort of, it's two ply. Can you hear me? Yes. Is it? Okay. Yes. So the, the yarn I'm using is two ply, 250 grams. But I still have that feeling, am I going to have enough? I mean, it doesn't look like I've used much for that front, but you always have, always have that feeling, oh, have I got enough? For the whole project, well, I think I do could, because looking at yardage on the, on the actual weigh, pattern, you could weigh that, couldn't you, and see how much weight is left from the weight where you started? It was five hundred grams. I didn't mean, I, yeah, but because, yeah, but because it's on a cone, I don't know how much it weighed. I didn't weigh it when I started. I should have really weighed it before I started. So yeah, I don't unless think you have, because of the actual cone. <laughs> Unless you have another cone. Yeah, I'd have to actually, I'd actually have to take it off and make it into a ball, the whole lot. Well, you might ask, you might ask the I company, think. you might ask the company you bought it from, how much does the cone weigh? Well, well, the thing is, I looked at the, the yardage, like the meterage of when I actually learned the actual pattern required from the James. And I looked at how much yard you know, meterage was on the on the Jameson two ply, and it was less than what I had on here. So I'm hoping, because I'm using different yarn, that I'll have plenty. So I I've, think, I've just I got this. Think so it looks like you've got quite a bit there, and you're Speaking maybe like a third of the way through. Well, a lot but, for sure. Yeah, you I mean, want to. Michelle, weigh it now so that when you're done your next piece, you have a better idea of how much that piece used. So thin. I'm I'm gonna go yeah, on. Yeah, I'm gonna go on to other on. people because your internet yeah, is probably, intermittent. Yeah. You're freezing and in and out. And I also see that a couple of new people joined us. So I want to try and like see if they want to uh, contribute anything. Rama, do you want to come off mute and introduce yourself and tell us if you're if you've started swatching or where you're at? Okay, she might not be able to hear me. I don't know. I've watched your first meeting, so excited to begin a meeting. But unfortunately, I'm reading her message. Um, um, yeah, I was right. Don't have the correct yarn. Oh. Yeah, I don't have the yarn yet, but um. I'm so excited. I would like to start maybe knitting this um, sweater, but I will check if I can get the yarn and start. And this is also a new um, a new method for me. So I should start like making this watch and then I will see. So wish me all the luck. Okay. Well, thanks for joining us. Canal, I didn't see you before. Hello. I'm going to come off mute and chat with us. Yes, hello. I thought you were starting at 12 o'clock Central Standard Time. I don't I mean, know where you got that idea because it's 12 uh, o'clock Eastern Standard Time in New York. Oh, please okay. help me, everyone, to understand what is the best way Zoom tells you the time, and I I I've tried to put in my emails to you, please make sure you pay attention, adjust the time to your local time zone, because there are people dialing in from all over the world. So the people in Europe are five or six hours ahead of me. Australia, I think, you know, 18 hours ahead. Um, so I don't have the possibility of giving every single time zone. I just assume that when you see that it says 12 noon, Eastern United States that 
you have to I, figure out what that means to you. So I take the blame. I take the blame completely on this. I was calculating. I thought you were eleven o'clock Eastern time, and I was oh. calculating at twelve o'clock Central time. Well, okay, here you are. So next time, like put it on your calendar now for two weeks from now, which everybody, by the way, we will c- come back again in two weeks, same day of the week, same time slot. So yeah, Louise, 6 a.m. in New Zealand. Good for you. Whoa. I know I interviewed somebody once who was, no, actually not interviewed. I had somebody on another knit along who was in I think she was New Zealand, not Australia. She was waking up really early to join us. Well, thank you so much. That's really um, determination. So I'm sorry about that. Oh, Turkey, really? Well, here's a little known factoid. My husband and I celebrated our honeymoon in Turkey. We'll be married 30 years later this year. And when we honeymooned in Turkey, it was before JFK Jr. It was not a very popular honeymoon destination. I think it's become more popular. It's a wonderful place to visit. At least we had a wonderful experience. I I said recently, I gained 15 pounds on my honeymoon. The food was so good. (sighs) Yes. Yeah, someday I'd like to come back and spend more time there. So let's see, do I have everybody? Is there anybody who wants to add anything? Barbara, you have your hand up. Was there something more you wanted to say? I did not know I had my hand up. Oh, that's okay. That's okay. Okay, so um, I think this is probably a good place to stop unless there's something else that's a you know burning question everybody's okay for the next two weeks you got your work laid out for you all right well thank you all for joining me I'm so happy that I was able to finally get this live streaming thing going on Um, let's see if there's still people out there yeah hello to the viewers out there thank you for being with us. Uh, I hope to be able to do this again. All right, everybody, enjoy your knitting. Stay well, enjoy the snow if you're in a place that's got a lot of it. I should show you my snow. Let me see if I can just do a quick, uh, I don't know. I don't think you're able to see the snow out there. Wow. Maybe not. Anyway. I should get some photographs, still photographs of it. It's very hot to knit, Louise says. Oh, yeah, that's right. You have summertime down under. Okay. See you next time. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Bye.